Hello everyone. Welcome to 2019. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas holiday and I hope that you had a very fun, eventful, and safe New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I'm really excited to bring you my first video of 2019 and we're going to start this year off by doing the tutorial for the Quilted Travel Notebook. A while back I did a journal release of travel notebooks and I still have a few in my Etsy shop, but when I released those journals, I promised that I would make a tutorial on how to make your own travel notebook. Today, I'm going to use some fabric that I got from a dear friend um, named Yvette, and we're going to walk through how to make this travel notebook together. And you can see it is quilted. This is a pattern, a patchwork pattern that I came up with. If you're uh, interested in the patchwork pattern for this cover, I do have that available in my Etsy shop as well. It's really fun. It's got several different small squares that you can customize with embroidery. Uh, you could sew on laces. You could do little appliques. Uh, all kinds of different things that you could do with this patchwork design and that pattern is in my Etsy shop. It's very simple. It gives you the things and the measurements that you need and uh, gives you a guide on how to assemble the pieces. So we're going to walk through how to make this travel notebook. Now this, me this notebook does measure. Let's see. Let's take some measurements. It's about four and three quarters wide. Yep four and three quarters wide and the length of this travel notebook is right over the eight and three quarters. I think it really depends on how wide you make your binding. Uh, usually it's about eight and three quarters long. So it is like a, a traditional sized travel notebook. It uses the regular travel uh, notebook size inserts and I'm going to show you how to put together your inserts for your journals at the end of this video and if you stay tuned I do have some friend mail to share with you so I would love to show you what I got in the last few days so we're going to have a lot of fun today we're going to make a travel notebook together I hope you follow along and you make your own notebook they make perfect gifts uh, I'm going to actually use this book in 2019 as my, um, let's see, like a brain buster. Whenever I have I ideas uh, and want to sketch things out, this will be my uh, book to do that in 2019. So let's go ahead and head out to the studio and we will get started with making this book. We are out in the studio now and we're ready to get started with today's tutorial. Now I love making journals out of all kinds of materials. Of course, I'm a quilter at heart and so I love making quilted journal covers. And you can use all kinds of fabrics for your journal covers. This is my current travel notebook. And I made this from a quilt that needed tons and tons of repair. It was really way beyond fixing. And so I took all of the good parts of the quilt and I made it into journal covers. Now a travel notebook, or what we call a travel notebook, is really made up of different inserts that can be uh, added and removed to your cover with an elastic system. And I'll show you how to string the elastics in just a little bit. So this is an insert from when we went to Vermont and I added all my goodies along the trip and did some journaling. And when you're done with your insert, you simply slide it out of the cover and you save this to document your life and uh, you can add a new insert. And it has an elastic that goes around and holds everything inside. So that's how a travel notebook works. These two uh, journals were made from orphaned quilt blocks and I know that we all have those lying around. Uh, blocks that didn't make it into a finished quilt. 
Uh, or if you feel like doing some patchwork, you can make your own covers. And that's what we're going to do today. So once I have my cover all assembled, I like to do lots of quilting and give it some texture. Today we're going to be working with this cover and I've already prepared and sewn all the pieces together and this is the pattern that I was talking about in the very beginning of this video. Everything is pressed nice and flat. So if you are making uh, your own travel notebook and you've made a quilt block that you'd like to use, you need to start with a piece of fabric that measures 10 inches wide and nine inches long. And we will be trimming this up and I will give you those measurements when we get to that part. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I like to do is bring in two layers of batting and I like to use an 80-20 batting. It's fairly thin and it's going to with stand the heat of an iron because we will be pressing this cover as we go along. Two layers of batting uh, gives your journal cover a really nice body and feel to it. And we're working with it just like this. We're not adding a lining yet or a backing fabric and we're ready to take this to the machine and do our quilting. Here we are at the sewing machine and I have the same color thread in the bobbin as I do the top thread. And I have my stitch in the ditch foot that came with my Juki machine and this is what the foot looks like. And I'm really loving this foot. My other machine did not have a stitch in the ditch foot. And so I'm getting used to working with uh, this type of foot and I think it really does help. For this particular journal cover, we're going to stitch in the ditch all of the different pieces that make up this cover. And I'll just bring you along for part of the stitch out and the quilting as we go along. Now you can do all kinds of quilting and usually I do a lot more quilting on my journal covers than I do on this particular journal. I like to do lots of free motion quilting on my covers and really add a lot of texture to the body of the journal itself. You'll see I'm just going along and stitching in the ditch between each one of the pieces. This little um, pattern, patchwork pattern, is a lot of fun. You could do all kinds of stuff within the different little squares. Uh, I think some applique would be really cute with this pattern. Um, once I get everything quilted uh, on one side of this cover, I'm going to finish the quilting and then I'm going to bring you along as I embroider my, uh, my little logo in the green square. So just going through and quilting. Little projects like this are great to get uh, practice in with your free motion work. Uh, if you are hesitant to do any free motion work on your quilts, I highly suggest doing little uh, projects like this to get in your practice. Now I'm going to go ahead and quilt the other side and we're going to meet at the embroidery machine. I'm at the embroidery machine and I have my logo loaded into the machine because I'm embroidering at the very bottom of my journal cover. Uh, it was going to be very difficult to hoop, so I've pinned it to the stabilizer within the hoop, and I'm ready to stitch it out. And I do have a piece of masking tape, making sure the bottom of that journal uh, does not do any shifting while the machine does all the work. I just thought it would be fun to bring you along and show you how the uh, embroidery machine can customize your quilt projects. And I think it's a lot of fun to add your initials or monograms to your journals. So we will stitch out my logo 
and then move on to the next part. Now that all the quilting is done on our cover and I've added my monogram or my logo, we're ready to go ahead and trim up our cover. So we want to trim our block to nine and three quarters wide and eight and three quarters long. And so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a ruler and trim everything up. I think the colors in this fabric are absolutely gorgeous. Again, uh, Miss Yvette, thank you so much for sending me this fabric. Uh, I'm gonna think of you every time I use my journal this year. <laughs> and uh, I'm just really grateful for all the friendships that I've uh, made throughout the process of making these videos. So again, I'm just using my rotary cutter and a straight edge ruler and cutting or trimming our journal cover. Fold it in half, that's what it's gonna look like. And now we are ready to add our lining. Now, I've prepared the lining with a piece of heat and bond light. And then I cut the lining to nine and three quarters wide and eight and seven, or eight and three quarters long. You can see the heat and bond is applied. And now we're ready to fuse the lining onto the inside of our journal cover. Now what this does is it hides all the imperfections in your quilting. If your tension wasn't right, or you did some uh, embroidery work, or um, any of those kinds of things, this method gives you a nice, clean, finished look on the inside of your journal. Now using the instructions on the fusible, we're gonna go ahead and fuse the lining fabric to the inside of our journal. Because we've used heat and bond light, we can do uh, additional quilting if you'd like, and we can sew on our binding. For the binding, you'll need 43 inches of binding material and we're ready to go ahead to the machine and sew that on. We are ready to attach the binding onto the front of our journal cover. I'm going to start down close to one of the corners but I'm going to give myself a good little uh, binding tail above where I start stitching. Now about an inch and a half away from the bottom of the corner I'm going to take a couple stitches and then do some back stitches to lock that into place. And then I'm going to sew down towards the corner, stopping a quarter inch away from the bottom of the raw edge of the quilt and remove the quilt from the machine and we're ready to do our mitered corners. Now to do our corners, I like to take the binding and fold it to the right forming an L shape with the binding. Match up your raw edges of the quilt and the binding, hold that into place, and then flip the binding back onto the quilt. Make sure you hold down your corners as you're flipping everything around. And then holding that securely in place, you can bring it back to the machine and continue stitching. When I start stitching again, I like to start at the very edge of the quilt do a couple back stitches and then sew down to the next corner, stopping a quarter inch before you get to the edge. And then repeat that process through all four corners. It's just like binding a quilt. Now you'll notice when I get down to the last side, uh, I like to sew about an inch and a half away from the top of that edge and stop and remove the quilt to finish up my binding. I did cut my binding a little bit too short this time. I've been quilting for many, many years and I still make mistakes, <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, and I know you're not gonna be able to see exactly what I'm doing because my hands are in the way, but to finish up the binding on this journal cover, 
I just take one of the raw edges and fold it uh, towards the inside giving myself a finished edge and then I tuck the raw edge of the other piece of binding inside and hold everything nice and flat onto the quilt and finish up the stitching. Once all of your binding is attached, we'll meet back at the pressing board. Now that the binding has been attached to the front and flipped over to the back side, we're going to give the binding a good nice press. Make sure it's all nice and flat. I like to add little tags to my small projects like this and so I've embroidered my logo onto a piece of fabric. And we're going to add that into the binding as we finish up this journal cover. I like to glue baste my binding into place and I add a small amount of glue and then fold my binding down onto the lining and then dry that glue and give the binding a good press with a hot iron with a little bit of steam. I repeat this process all the way around forming little mitered corners and giving the binding a very nice clean look. And once everything is nice and dry with your binding you can bring it to the sewing machine and I like to stitch from the front in the ditch along the binding to stitch down and finish off our journal cover. Now this will complete our journal cover, uh, the construction of our cover and we're ready to move into the office and break out all of our journal making supplies and add the elastics. Now we're inside the office and let's go over some of the other supplies that we need. I have some beading cord here and this is just elastic cord. It is very thin and I like the thinner elastics. I have five little eyelets that we're going to add to our journal cover. I have some different beads and charms and I have some sewing charms that I might choose from. I'm also going to be using my crop a dial too to add the holes into the spine of our journal cover. So let's clear everything off and we will punch the holes for our eyelets. We're going to be doing five holes. I like to fold my journal in half to give myself a position to mark where I'd like to punch the holes. And I'm going to mark the inside lining because you won't see it if I don't exactly punch the holes in the correct spot. I like to mark my holes right underneath of the binding. I don't like to punch my holes through the binding. And I do two holes up at the top about a quarter inch apart. And I do one hole in the very center. Now using the crop a dial. Make sure if you're doing this to use the correct setting for the type of eyelet that you have. I'm punching a hole through uh, the lining fabric, both layers of the batting and the front of our journal cover. Now once the holes are punched you might have some fuzzy bits that you need to remove and I just take a pair of scissors and trim those little fuzzy bits off so that the eyelets lay nice and flat. Once everything is nice and trimmed pretty we will add the eyelets and I like to add them from the front. Make sure they poke through to the back side 
and then you can go ahead and press them nice and flat. So we're doing two eyelets at the bottom. And then we'll do one eyelet in the center. And then two eyelets up at the top. Now, of course, there's all different kinds of ways that you can add your elastics. Some people like to only do one eyelet at the top and bottom. I like to do two because I like to add a little accent bead on the outside of my journal. Now all of my eyelets have been added. I have fuzzy bits all over the place. We're ready to add our elastics. I'm going to go ahead and choose the bead for the outside. I measure out the elastic and to do that I do two times the length or two and a half times the length. I start from the inside up at the top and I add my bead. So from the inside the bottom hole add the bead and then go in the very very top hole back into the inside of the journal. Then I'm going to go in all the way to the bottom String that and then pulling the elastic tight but not too tight, I go ahead and tie a knot. Make sure that night is, knot is nice and secure and you can trim off the extra. So now I have a little accent bead at the top of my journal. Now we're ready to add the elastic for the closure. To do that, I measure out my elastic one and a half uh, times the width of the journal to start with, and that'll give you a little bit extra to work with. If you like, you can add some beads or charms to your elastic. And then I like to take both of the ends of the elastic, working from the outside of the journal thread it through to the inside and tie a knot and make sure not to tie this knot too tight in case you have to adjust your closure. Now that our journal cover is all complete, we're going to set that aside and I'm going to bring you along as I make two different inserts for my journal. You can see I have a variety of different pages. I like to use coffee dyed paper, regular copying paper, lined paper, scrapbooking paper, uh, cardstock. Sometimes I include book pages. So you can have no limits to the different variety of papers that you add to your inserts. More than likely, you're going to need to trim your papers. And the measurements I like to use would be uh, eight and a half inches wide and eight and a quarter inches long. And when you fold your insert in half, that gives you an insert that measures roughly four and a quarter inches wide and eight and a quarter inches long. And I believe that that is the standard size for a travel notebook journal insert. So I'll just bring you along with me as I'm trimming all of my papers. Uh, I love the look of a junk journal type of insert. And so uh, you'll see I'm using all different kinds of papers, even the front of a manila envelope. <laughs> um, so the chunkier you make your insert, you're going to notice that your pages have different uh, edges to them. They're not going to all be flush. I personally like that look, but if you would like all of the edges to your inserts to be completely flush, once you make your insert, you can go back with a paper trimmer and trim up all of those edges. I like to use my bone folder and fold down nice and flat all of my folds. 
and then I'm just going to sort through all of the different papers into two inserts. The next thing we'll do is bring you along and show you two different ways that I like to secure and finish my inserts. And one, one way would be to staple them, and the other way would be to hand sew them with a needle and thread. So I'll just let you watch as I go through and organize my papers, and then we'll move on. Now that I have my two inserts all sorted out, I'm ready to go ahead and secure them into place. The first way I'm going to show you is with a stapler. And of course, the stapler does not fit all the way to the center of the insert. And so here I'm using a piece of cork board and stapling directly in the center. And the cork absorbs the little prongs of the staple and does not bend them for me. And so I'm able to manually turn the insert over and push down the little pointy parts of the staple with my bone folder. You could use a wash rag folded several times or some foam sheets, um, anything that will absorb the staple and not uh, bend that for you and so that you're able to do that all on your own. The second way is to hand sew my insert. And I'm gonna just take my awl or a sharp pointy uh, tool and poke three holes, one at the top, the center, and the bottom. And then with a needle and thread, I'll sew my insert. So there's two different ways that you could finish up your insert. The staple is, of course, the fastest way. I'm just using some quilting thread and a needle, and I'll start on the inside of my insert and go to the outside, and then go up to the top hole from the outside, working in, and then go all the way down to the bottom hole, back outside the insert, and come up through the middle. Make sure both of your thread tails are on either side of the middle string and tie a knot. Now you could leave your strings long and hang some beads on the end of that or trim them and make them shorter. Now there's two ways to finish your insert. Now of course at this point you could be done and add your inserts into your journal cover if you know me, you know I like to add <laughs> lots of little embellishments and lace trims to my journal. I think it just really gives it a very vintage feeling to my book and uh, also makes them a little girly. <laughs> makes them very pretty and uh, a lot of fun to use. So I'm just going to bring you along as I add some lace trims to my book and uh walk you along that process. I like to use Fabrifix glue. Uh, it dries clear and it dries pretty quick and so you're able to add different things to your pages and still be able to work inside your journal while the glue is drying. Now let's talk about the travel sized notebook journal. Uh, of course I, I, I'm pretty sure that it, this size journal originated from people taking these journals on their travel because of the size it's very convenient to tuck in a bag and uh, it doesn't take up a lot of space 
However, there are so many uses for this size journal um, because it is smaller. Uh, it's very easy to take along with you. I know a lot of people in the journaling world like to put watercolor paper in their inserts and uh, bring along their watercolor palettes and they can do their artwork and sketching on the go. I know a lot of journalers like this size uh, journal to document their, um, their life and to use as a scrapbook. And the elastic system really makes it easy that once you fill up your insert, you can make a new one or purchase a new one and add that into your cover as well. We really only go on travel about twice a year. And so uh, I have found many different uses for this size journal other than as a travel notebook. This particular cover will be all of my ideas for 2019. And uh, as I fill it up, I can add new inserts. And uh, I look forward to using this book a lot. Once you have your inserts all finished, you're ready to slide them into your elastics. And I will say the more you use your notebook, the softer it will be. Uh, I tend to find that my newer journal covers are a bit, um, I don't want to say stiff, but they tend to feel more quilty the more you work with them. So here's my cover and I've added my inserts. At this point, I'll go ahead and trim off the extra bits of elastic from the center closure. And we'll do a quick flip through and see all of the different pages. I've had a lot of fun making this uh, quilted journal cover with you. I hope that you make one of your own. And uh, if you'd like to share pictures, join me over on Facebook. So I have some friend mail to share with you, and I can't wait because I'm super excited. This first piece is from Bonnie, and Bonnie sent me a quilted postcard all the way from Hawaii. I bet your weather is awesome there, Bonnie. And she said she was inspired by Robin at RS Island Crafts. And I'm going to have to check out the video because I've seen quilted postcards before, but none made exactly like this. And so I absolutely love it. It is so creative. Uh, I just think it is so adorable. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for thinking of me. I was super excited to open up the mailbox and see this waiting for me. I absolutely love that. I'm going to have to make some. This next card is from Connie. And Connie lives in Canada. And I have to say, I love the sparklies on the outside of this card. <laughs> it's so sparkly. Thank you so much, Connie, for your nice note that was inside. I'm so glad that you are along in this journey with me. And I feel very blessed by their friendship. And uh, I'm just very thankful. Thank you so much for thinking of me and sending me a card. I'm going to add it to the collection of postcards. This next card is from Terry. And Terry lives in Texas. And inside the Christmas card was a postcard. And uh, I just have to say, I've been to the Riverwalk and it was super exciting. I loved every minute of it and probably ate way too much food. The food was amazing. <laughs> and uh I don't think I spent enough time there, so I look forward to coming back your way one day. Thank you so much, Terry, for sending me your postcard and Christmas card. I'm going to add them to the collection as well. And this last card is from Lori, and she lives in Michigan? Am I? Is that Michigan? I'm thinking that's Michigan. <laughs> I have a lot to learn about state abbreviations. I'm so sorry, Lori. I absolutely love your card. Thank you so much for sending this to me. I feel very honored and very blessed to have you um, quilting along with me in 2019. Thank you all so much. Bye.